Hello everybody, this is Founder Leroon, and I am going to go through a tutorial about tokens. Now many of you have purchased content that has tokens already built into it, or maybe you've purchased a few through the store. A lot of that's already bundled for you and ready to go. You normally don't have to mess with it too much. A lot of them are attached to like NPCs, or you can assign them to your players. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you that, but I'm also going to show you a couple free tools that you can use online. The first tool is called Roll Advantage Token Stamp, and it is a free online utility. So all you have to do really is find a photo that you would like to turn into a POG or a um, kind of like a portrait token. So on my hard drive, I have a token that I want to use. It's a dwarven portrait that I had commissioned when I donated to Smiteworks for the Kickstarter. So as part of that package, I was given a free commissioned piece of art that will always be included in the Fantasy Grounds Fantasy uh, or the Smiteworks folder. So that's kind of cool. You get to kind of be a part of the history of the, the application. Um, so anyways, um, I'm going to go to my folders where I have my artwork at. And what I've done is I've picked one out of these just to make this tutorial a little bit quicker. Um, hopefully this doesn't bore you too much, but um, it's a kind of a valuable thing to know. So I have a social media folder and in here I have a token of my character portrait. Now you can use JPEGs or PNG files. I recommend PNG files if you have them. That way you can find them um, to be a higher quality. And you can also take the background out. So if I don't want the green background, so I'll drag that over onto the web page. And up on the top here is my preview. Hopefully you can see that. Take a look. Yeah, you should be able to see that. So. Um, I'm going to adjust the outside of the, um, the token, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the Fantasy Grounds image for right now, so it's not in your way. So I will hide the marquee, and I will hide the Fantasy Grounds uh, Unity capture, and that way you guys can see the the actual what's happening here. So that's just a uh, a uh, preview window of, of Fantasy Grounds. I'll bring that back up later. But I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So back to the web page. Um, this, like I said, this is called Roll Advantage Token Stamp. And it's, it's free. It looks like it's sponsored by Foundry, but it pretty much says, uh, you know, you can use it with any of your favorite online role-playing games. So anyways, you can adjust this photo by moving it around. If it's a PNG file, you can expand it without distorting it as much. And what I could do is just kind of play around with the scale of it. Well, that looks pretty good. So you can use that as your starting point. And then you can change, do you want it square or circle? I kind of prefer circles because they show up better against the square um, tiles in the... Uh, in the rule sets or in the maps but nonetheless this is basically i just want to make it a little bit bigger there we go and i'm trying to include so i don't cut out that top part so it's kind of hard to there we go close pretty close so there's that you can use you know you can have something that already has a background in it and then you have these rings or squares that you can pick so like here's a classic 5e um, token ring if you want to use that. You can also change the opacity and the color. Here's another one that's a little bit more plain. I kind of like that better. And then you can change the color of the ring with the border tint. So I can make it more of a blue or, or however you want to do it. So if I move this out, you can see that changes slightly. So there's like an off kind of almost a grayish color. Or if you want, you can use a square so you can have more of the photo, which I think is kind of cool too. Or even a thinner circle so you can see more of the photo. I kind of like what I had going on before. I think that's pretty cool. And I'm going to light it up just a hair. 
There we go. Want a little bit of blue in it, but not too much. And then I'm going to readjust the helmet, of course, because it's getting to be a little bit out of context. So if I don't want to fight with that and your work don't like the background, you can always use a different image that doesn't have the background. So I have the same image, but it has the background taken out. And I went ahead and did this myself using a photo editing program. I think this looks a lot cleaner and it, you don't have to worry about the edge of the, the picture as much. So I think this is a lot better way to go. Um, so if you have a, a PNG version, it, it can, you know, those files, you can stretch them a little better without distorting the image. So that looks pretty good. And then you can, um, you can, you can fine adjust it or, or you know whatever you want and then i can change the background now that i have a clean background so i don't have to have that icky brown color i can lighten it up a little bit so i can actually see the contrast between the background and the face of this particular character so this is my uh dwarven healer dorig rock fist um it was one of my first healer clerics that I used way back when. I still use them. Uh, same personality. You've got your typical dwarven kind of, you know, think Gimli on Lord of the Rings. Kind of has that kind of feel to him. Uh, he's very, uh, very bossy sometimes and uptight, but he, he means well. And that's pretty much it. So once you've done that, then you can download it. You can set a custom border if you want. So you can actually upload a border if you already have some um, there's other features you can add text if you want um, but nonetheless you can change the opacity so you don't want the overlay to be so so dark you can you can change the opacity if you want and also the border opacity so you can kind of make the border a little bit more transparent so when you put it on the map you can see a little bit of the the uh, image and some of the background underneath it. I don't think I need it that transparent, but nonetheless, it just gives you an idea of what, what can be done. I think I just barely put any opacity on it. So once I hit download, it's going to generate a PNG file. And at this point, I'm just using the Microsoft um, built-in picture thing, but if you want to play around with it after the fact, that's up to you. But Usually what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll edit it a little bit. See, I don't need to trim it any. I just want to add a little bit more light to it, just a just a touch of of uh, brightness to it, not much. And then I'm going to add more color. And as you add more color, it makes it more vibrant and rich. Uh, clarity kind of brings out some of the details. So I'm going to put the clarity up because I definitely want to see more of the lines, especially when it's zoomed in. You can't really... Uh, or zoomed out, you can't really see much. And then I don't, I don't mess with the vignette at all. And then I'm just going to hit save. And once it's saved, now I'm going to go to the folder where it's stored at and pull that over into Fantasy Grounds. So I'll bring up Fantasy Grounds. Hopefully you guys can see this. Yep. Okay, so I will bring up this Fantasy Grounds uh, background or this uh, application. And I'm going to kind of rearrange a desktop a little bit. Okay, so when you want to add a, an asset, and this kind of applies to everything, you open up the assets folder, and you might have some of these bags, maybe not, but um, you want to make sure, in this case, we're working with tokens. So we want to make sure you're in the tokens area. And then there's a folder button at the bottom. So it's next to store. Uh, so I'm going to click on that. Right now, there's nothing in there, absolutely nothing. So I'm going to go to my Downloads folder and open it in a new window. And there's my Doric token. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename this now. So it's Doric Rockfist. And I'm going to take him and drag him and drop him or copy and paste. I think I'll copy and paste in case I want to. Put them somewhere else too. And I'll hit paste. Now what you might want to do is create subfolders. So when you make a bunch of them, you have them in 
at least a few separate folders. So instead of just putting them in all in tokens, let's go ahead and make a few sub subfolders. So I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call this uh, PC tokens. And then I'm going to drag this in there. And this is basically organizing your folders in the back end. Now, this only shows up in campaigns. If I want to use Dorig in other campaigns, not just this one, because right now I'm in a, a complete, you know, separate campaign, you need to put it in the higher level folder, which is the data folder. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for a minute. I'm going to close this. Now, the data folder is the higher level folder. So when I hit refresh, it's going to refresh this list and it's going to make a campaign folder and that's specific to this game or the session. So I'm going to hit the refresh button. So whenever you add anything or remove anything, you click the refresh folder assets. So now it's built a folder called campaign and here's my bag or my extra folder and there's Doric. And if I double click on it, you get a you get a preview okay so now if you want the same token available in all games instead of just the one you need to go to the campaign folder or excuse me the uh, data folder and in the data folder you're going to open us up and you're going to see this directory so you need to go back to fantasy grounds now this is the higher level directory and once you're in here, you'll click on tokens, and then you can add tokens accordingly. So I have one called custom. And this one has all my custom made tokens. So I'm going to make a copy of Dorig in here in case I want to use this. So it says I already have one. And that's because I, I do already have it, but I want this other one too. So what I'm going to do is add a one and now I'm going to paste it because now I'll have a different name there we go so there's the one version and then here's the other and all of these were made pretty much the same way except for these down here and this one and this one but all the rest of these were made the same way so this is this is an easier quicker way to, to crank out tokens you can do multiples on that website. So if you bring up the website, there is a way that, there used to be a way you could do a batch. Yeah, enable batch mode, but you have to drop multiple images to start sampling and then you click start batch stamping. So you're gonna drop a whole bunch of images, but you need to make sure they're all oriented the same and they're roughly, the, the, and they're all the same size. Otherwise they'll be offset. So it doesn't work very good in batch mode, but if you have everything and they look very similar, I think this would work good if you had like numbers or letters, not so much like pictures. But that's one tool you could use to help you uh, manage and set up your token. So in review, you have your tokens folder, and then whenever you make changes, which I just did, you hit the refresh button and it will, it will refresh. So in my custom folder, if I double click on it, there's all the tokens. And the one that I made was Dorig, and that was this one here. So be careful with duplicating uh, tokens too. You might have you know 100 in your data folder, but in your campaign folder, you might have a dozen and they might all be duplicates. So just be kind of be careful with that. If you don't mind duplicates, that's okay. But if you're trying to save hard drive space and memory, that's a good idea to keep your, your collections clean and updated and organized. So now the next thing is another tool called Token Tool. So this is more of an application program. As you can see, I have this base here, which I'm not going to use. I was using this for top downs. So if you have a top down token, you can drop it on here and it would become like your your base which is semi-transparent and then when you export it put it on the map you have this little square that stand that it sits on well in this case i'm going to use this this rune circle for my dwarf so this is basically kind of like an overlay type thing 
and you can change if you want it to send it to the back layer or the front and you can also clip the portrait depends on what what you're putting here and now for portrait options I'm going to change the portrait option and I'm going to add Doric again this time I will use the background instead of cutting it out so let me go to my social media folder and uh, see if I can find it nope it will only take PNG files it looks like so I'll just take that for now now as you can see it doesn't fit quite but uh, when you play around with this it, it'll, it'll start to work so it doesn't give you as much sizing options as the other but it does allow you to hit control and use your mouse wheel so once you've done that once you get it in position then what you can do is go back to your overlay and here you can hit clip the portrait which basically takes the this out and puts it into the context of a token so now you have this thing here where you have this context of the uh, you know of this thing here this character and then if you have a background you want to use you can certainly take and put a different color in here and it will show you the preview window what it's going to look like uh, depending on what you choose so I'm going to go with a bluish color now nah, it's too 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 close to his and yeah, it's too dark let's go with something like a light gray there we go so that this looks pretty good if so up here on the top right you have your your uh, token and then we go to save options uh, you can number the tokens this one has a way that you can uh, actually number them in a series but I'm gonna just go ahead and put dwarf cleric and then you can use a numbering system so I'm just going to put a zero one, and what it'll do is it'll keep a a uh, save portrait on drag and drop. Use token name. Yeah, so here's the suffix will be TKN for the portraits. So it'll go TKN, and then it will put the dwarf uh, title in there. And now when you hit save, you know um, it will do it. So now that I have this and I have it set up, now I'm going to hit file save as and what I see it says dwarf cleric underscore zero one if you want to use the uh, the token name you can go like that so let's see if what that looks like file save as and I go to my downloads folder and see it's already changed the suffix because it thinks that I'm creating more assets and I'm not okay let's try that so now we're gonna go with file save as and see it's already going to number two after that so I'm gonna go to my downloads folder and again I'm gonna save it so basically you have a couple different options here this is free this is from RP tools and it will also you can open up PDFs and uh, take things out of there as well which is handy so if you have a PDF with some uh, artwork in there that you want to use I think this will will do the trick but anyways you get the idea of kind of how this thing works um, so now that uh, now that that's happening let's take a look at the actual token and see how it turned out let's see what do we got that's social media folder okay so here's the token it's not bad it looks pretty good I mean it's similar to what I had before except for you have the you know the ring around it and you have custom background and you don't have to use the colors you can actually use a file so you could have your own tiling or whatever fancy stuff you have in the background maybe a dwarven city so when you make your dwarves all have the same background um, now I'm gonna take the um, editing tool and just kind of touch it up a little bit so I'll bring up the clarity some color some bring the colors out just a touch on the light to bring up some lightness and that's about it and then I'm gonna hit save that's a pretty good looking token 
I mean, it's kind of has a 3D appearance to it, so I like that. And it, it really has, it pops. So again, if I want to add that to Fantasy Grounds, I'm going to go to the folder where they're stored. And right now it's in the campaign folder. So if I want to drop that in there, I can just copy and paste that token in there. So let's hit uh, copy. And then I'm going to hit paste. So here's two different variations of it. Now when I close this, and then I go back to the the uh, data folder, or excuse me, campaign folder, and I go to tokens, it's not there. Because you have to hit refresh whenever you make changes. And now it's there. And there's your preview. So that's basically how you manage your tokens. You make little folders inside of the the campaign folder or inside of the data folder. So if I go back to Fantasy Grounds, now this is the upper level. I was in campaigns. Now I'm going to take and go to the porch or excuse me, tokens and the custom one. And then I'm going to paste this in here just like I did with the other one. So there's another variation of the same token. So basically that's that's what you do. Uh, Fantasy Ground too. That's how, and it's kind of the same with everything else. Portraits kind of the same way. Uh, images are very similar. So it's just a matter of knowing where things are and sizing them and labeling them correctly. And it should make things smoother for you. So now once you have something like this, now I can open up a character sheet and I'm going to actually import the character that I want to use. So I've clicked on the import button and any characters that I've made in Fantasy Grounds Unity will become available for me to pick. I uh, used to have to use the character manager in Classic. Now it's a separate uh, built-in thing. So. So here he is. Here's Doric Rockfuss. So I'm going to hit the plus button. And then I'm going to close this down. Or excuse me, I'm going to hit the back arrow. And here's the character. And it looks like he's already had a token, this little 3D top-down one. But I'm going to go ahead and drag this over. And now that's my token. So the difference is when you drag this over to your combat tracker, instead of having the, the portrait as your token, you have an actual token. So drag that over, that's the actual token that's going to be on the map. So if you bring up an image, I don't really care what the image is. All right, so here's an image of a dwarf. But when I bring Dorig over there, this is what his token looks like. So it kind of gives you an idea of what it's going to, you know, what it's going to appear like. So it's just a preview. So anyways, that's your uh, tutorial on tokens. There are a bunch of other token making tools, um, but those are some free third party asset making tools for, for tokens. So when I post this, I will post the links for those two tools. And hopefully this helps you with your uh, tokens. So these are just some suggestions and ideas. Um, I didn't want to get into Photoshop and all that. That's, that's a whole other thing. So hopefully that's helpful. 